Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, C2 at DVS, and thank you for all your likes, comments, shares and subscriptions. We really, really appreciate it. Wherever you are in the world, please stay safe and we look forward to meeting you up at some time in the near future. The second thing I'd like to say is thank you to for Toshiba for sponsoring our channel. If you haven't used their hard drive technology yet, now is the time to do so. And thirdly, don't forget to download DVS in your pocket. So Android and iOS application on there, download it. Loads of helpful content on there, download manuals, bandwidth, storage calculator, log attack call, look at your quotes that your sales guy send you if you're a DVS customer and loads of new content to follow very, very shortly. Okay, so what are we gonna look at today? So today, thank you to Val. So Val's our external sales manager up north, um, field sales manager in her area, absolutely fantastic. For those of you that know Val, she consistently provides me feedback in what the customers are asking her. So this video has come from Val, so thank you. So one of her customers raised a valid question, one we get asked quite a lot actually, so I thought why not do a simple, quick little video on it. It's about the live view permissions. So as you can see here, we've got a standard NVR, so iSeries NVR, but this would apply for most of the DVRs and NVRs in our range now with the latest firmware. The customer wants to restrict the live view on this screen. So they want to be able to record a camera, almost like a covert option that we had um, you know, in the days gone by, where the customer wants to give a camera the ability to record, but the client or the user who interfaces to it, not to see that for lots of different reasons, like, like I said, covert for um, GDPR, or you know a covert operation that they can't see or sensitive data could be a till or a safe etc that they don't want the you know the normal staff to interact with we can actually do that through the front end gui on gui 4 we can restrict the live view privilege so it allows us to take a camera away from the camera selection um, but it will still record in the background therefore an admin user can then log in get the recording etc but the normal user interacts with it can't so i'm going to reposition the camera to show you this screen up front so you can follow what i'm doing so give me two seconds and i'll reposition this and we'll pick up where we left off okay so i positioned you in front of the screen hopefully you can actually see this feedback so first thing you need to do is log in if you're not logged in then you go to system icon at the top of the gui on the left hand side you've got the user tab so select user and I've got the admin as myself, and I've also added a user. Now, under the normal user, so you can click add, get, type in the admin user and create a new user if I wish. But and once I've created a user, I can select this green tick, confirm the permission password. So let me just uh, block that from view while I do this. So I can already configure their options, so remote configuration, local configuration. Under each user, I can actually have remote live view, local live view, etc. And I can actually deselect what they're allowed to view anyway. So when they log in as, their, as that user, then effectively they can't see the playback or the live view of those selected channels. Now that works if the person actually logs out, um, which doesn't happen that often. Um, and each user may have different privileges. If you want to set a specific camera to always not be on the main screen regardless, we can cancel this, so that's one way. We can go to live view permissions on lock screen here, so select this option, and we simply deselect the cameras that we don't want to show on the lock screen. So the cameras that are shown, so all users will have the live view permission of selected channels. So if I don't want cameras one to five, for instance, let's just take off one to five, well, let's just do one to eight. Click apply. The live view will be cap yes. Click OK. Go back to live view. Log out. So it's, it's imperative that you log out. So click this power off button. Sorry, the mouse is playing out. Log out. Log out. Yes. And you can see there no permission. So on the locked screen, there's no permission to view those eight cameras that I selected. And if I double click it, it just says no permission, nothing I can do there. It doesn't matter if I put it in a new division, it asks me to log in, which I can't. So go back to there. The one I don't give permission to, you can see there, will allow, absolutely allow me to see the live view audio, etc. And if I go back, any of the others are fine. Um, but these ones are no permission. 
So hopefully you'll find that very useful. So let me just zoom out here. So let me just uh, put that there, put that there. So really, really useful. Then what you need to do, if you've set that permission, all you actually need to do then is go to menu and then log in as the main user. So I'll just hide this. And as soon as I log in then, I've now got all of the views as the admin user. So hopefully that's given you a nice little insight. It's very much underused this function, but if you do want to use it, that's how you set it up. It's really, really powerful and it will help answer lots of the privacy questions that we do get asked, you know, day to day, week on week. Stay tuned, stay subscribed. Hope you have a lovely week ahead. I'm off this week, so this is pre-recorded, but stay safe and we'll see you next week for another how-to video. Thanks all, bye.